Hi, everybody. <laughs> Happy holidays. You can see I've got my little friend here. We've all been laughing because the mailman, our favorite person in the whole world these days, um, just showed up. And um, he asked Christina if his dad was here, <laughs> if her dad was here, i.e. Jim. So <laughs> if any of you guys follow us on Instagram, um, today's Jim's birthday. So we decided that he could be allowed to go home early. But anyway, that was pretty good, Christina. It just goes to show, you know, we're all just one big happy family. Anyway, we're glad to be here. Say hello, Brooke. Oh, hello. I am here <laughs> behind the screen. Yes, she is. Hello. She's got her holiday hat on. We're all ready. We've got our buddy here with us. You know, he's a spoiler alert. Um, if you don't want me to, I won't tell you his real name. He's been known by Baby Yoda for quite some time now, but um, he does have a real name. So if you want to duck out for a second, then I'll tell the people who already know. This is our mascot. <laughs> Are we ready? Grogu. It's written on the back because I can't get it right. <laughs> He's I've a little what one eyed right now. He's a little oh, shifty. Yeah, he looks so adorable. <laughs> He's so adorable. He's so adorable. I just love him. But anyway, so we figured that we would come say hello, spread some holiday cheer, find out what you guys are up to, hoping that everybody else is getting in the spirit. Although it's a, a very different holiday season, it's still the holiday season. So. We're all making the best of it and uh, possibly creating some new uh, traditions, some new tra non-traditional traditions. Um, we had mentioned that we were going to talk about some of the new things that we have, um, some of the things that we've been doing. I know that uh, you guys have been following along, and I'm wondering if any of you got to any of our mini sew-alongs. Um, making the work bag or making the pin pillows. Um, we actually, after those mini sew alongs, put together some little kits for people just to make it easy. And they've been very popular. So I think we are, I think we're out of both we're, the, we're out. Yeah, yes. the work bags and the pin pillows, but we keep coming up with new things. Um, Rebecca from Timesmith Dressmaking says she's made three work bags already. Oh, good for her. That's great. That's great. They make great gifts. They're great as gift bags because they're reusable. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad. That's fantastic. And, of course, you can actually use them for historic interpretation and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've been, okay, so I have to preface this by saying the ladies have been going through the warehouse, and they have dug up stuff that I squirreled away. <laughs> a long, a long time ago. Um, and they're like into cleaning mode. So Christina was mostly into cleaning mode. Yeah, Christina's like been, Christina's been rocking it. She's playing with our, our sound levels right now. So hopefully you can hear me well. You can hear Brooke well. Um, but Christina... Typically, we've always done the thing where we've recycled our, our off-cut pieces and things like that at shows. But, hello 2020, and there are no shows, and there is no way to recycle um, other than to put it online. So, Christina, and then with some input from all the other ladies, came up with some great ideas uh, for getting all those off-cuts to you guys. So we've had pin pillow kits, which were basically our um, old textiles that were cuts from swatch packets um, that we save. We save everything, you guys. We, we try to recycle. We don't throw things away. So um, which you can tell because I'm going to show you some things that I don't even want to date how old they are. But um, we uh, we put together kits that were for pin pillows. So you can make like 10 different pin pillows. Um, 
we did off cuts of silk and stuff. That was a little bit different for our work bags. Uh, but also, um, we now have pieced pocket kits, which are basically the same thing. And I did a, um, a little post. Oh, don't fall down, buddy. Okay. He may need to go sit on the couch. He, yeah. He's, a he's little doing top, well. He's a little top heavy. Yeah. yeah it's because he's so smart. Uh, <laughs> he's got a big brain. Um, we've put together these kits that are enough squares, which you can also cut up into smaller squares, do whatever you want. If any of you saw my Instagram post yesterday, I think it was, uh, Lemonade Made Daily is uh, an amazing quilter. And she has taken every single scrap that she's ever gotten from us, including old swatch packets, and turned it into something beautiful. And one of the things she did was a really beautiful uh, pieced pocket uh, front that she used that looks like it was some offcuts from leftover fabric and also some of our sample pieces. So you're gonna get like a, a grouping of linens that might be stripes, might be checks, might be uh, solids, um, and they'll have a color um, name to them so that you have kind of a, a, a theme going on. Christina had way too much fun with yeah, all she, of the color names, especially for the grab bags. Yeah. She, uh, she had way too much fun. But that's but, good. But yeah. So we've still got those. They're very inexpensive. Uh, it gives, if you don't have your own cabbage, then you can use this cabbage to create something pretty or do something different with it. You don't have to make a pocket out of it. But you can see here, this is something that um, uh, Brooke started. She had started a piece pocket way back when. She had some of this linen. And then this is, of course, from our little miniature gown workshop that we did in person um, and she's been putting together a pieced front for that. We also had all, we always have off cuts of trims and things where it's less than a yard. Ribbons, linen, cotton, wool, all of it. And so a lot of that was put together last year, never became something, it never got up online, never went to a show, and it's now all been put up online and I think a lot of it is already gone right the, tr like the, the trims the you, have some, you have some but what there. about the silk is the silk ribbons gone uh there's one left <laughs> at least there so, was like 30 minutes ago and right. then we have some of the linen tape yep um, so trim bags. it's grab bags you know like this one is the half inch i think this is all half inch it it's looks all linen like tape, it. yeah yeah all linen tape and there's half a bunch inch. of different wool ones there's and like then the like this and... is llama braid that we are never going to get again that we had for quite some time um, and this is the last bits and pieces. And I know there are people out there that have it, um, that have gotten it in the past from us that may even want those last little bits. So we've got all these different grab bags. We've had a few cabbage bags. I think there might be still be a few cabbage bags left. Mm -hmm. um, and What's they're all it? deeply discounted because basically, you know, we want to recycle it. We want somebody to take it and love it and turn it into something. So... Um, I have gobs of stuff. Oh, here's another one that she did. This is also one of our, our uh, reproduction prints. And then it's got another check that she used uh, in a project. So very pretty. Um, I've got gobs of things that, that we've gotten in. But I'm also curious, you know, what are you guys sewing on? Are you doing anything for the holidays? Are you doing any sewing for the holidays? Well, a lot of people have been mentioning that they've been doing the um, work bags. Um, Good. Some people have been making both. Um, someone suggested that some scraps that'd be good for housewives. Um, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, these would be perfect for little pieced housewives. Yeah. And there's plenty here to do that with. And I know Kat from, um, or Kate from Willoughby and Rose sells uh, the housewife kits. And some of the fabrics um, mm -hmm. are from... I also think she has a YouTube. She does. That yeah. shows how to put a housewife together. Yes. And yeah. remember, she still and she still has one that's uh, all the fabrics from us that she yeah. calls the gym. Yeah, the gym. Yeah, the wool one. Yeah. yeah. She actually, um, she ha uses a lot of our, our textiles in her housewives, which is, we greatly appreciate. 
So, so historic heroine, um, who's been making all the different Felicity outfits mm-hmm. over the past year, she is working on the Christmas gown, um, and she's currently working on um, the hoops, the pocket hoops to go with it. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, uh, a Hughes Taylor is working on a waistcoat. Um, we've got some sweaters being knitted, knitted mittens, gowns, mo- Lacey's modifying her old stays. Um, Joan just started a shift. We've got, uh, Asgard Academy is working on the second cap from the Sew Along. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And... Oh, I thought Christina was saying what she's been working on, but now she was just chatting. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's working on uh, snarky flowers, working on a chemisette. Oh, and that reminds yeah. me, I need to get you your chemisette back that I borrowed. It, yeah. I'm, I'm in the process of pressing it. It's a lot of pressing of those ruffles. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I don't know if you guys saw the pictures that I posted of her and Brittany when they did a uh, Regency, socially distanced Regency tea for our... Um, uh, Regency Society of Virginia had a little outdoor thing at a local historic site, um, and Brooke wore a gown of mine that um, I made a long time ago from Jan and Arnold, and um, my shimmy set, which was a combination of Emma Cross from Black Bonnet Millinery making it for me and me enlarging it for a different body that doesn't fit into it anymore but anyway it's still pretty (laughs) there are some more caps being made um quilted petticoats um wow quilted petticoats salamander's making a dress for her daughter out of linen that she got from us um she's um selena uh is working on with some friends to do all the sew alongs that we've been posting oh that's great yeah I, you know, hey, you know, that would be a great idea to do like a a, a Zoom sew along party to watch, to share the screen, to watch the sew along, and then sew together. Yep. Someone's getting ready to start a collage. Um, yeah, I think um, Amber has just come out with a collage pattern. Yes. Yeah, from uh, Virgil's Fine Goods um, has just produced a uh, collage pattern. So. If you don't follow her, check her out. I have never made a collage before. We've actually done workshops on it. I know. It's just yeah. one of those things I missed. Somehow it just never was part of my education. Yeah. They're not, they're really not difficult to make. And they're pretty cool. They're kind of fun. The engineering of them. You know, I own, I actually own an original collage. Which I should probably bring and show to you guys one day. Yeah. So. Um, someone uh, named Colette mm-hmm. is asking if you're ever going to make patterns from the caps that she sold you a million years ago. Yes. <laughs> I already did, Colette. I, I actually have now made a pattern. This is something we're going to be offering next year in our online workshops. Um, one of those caps is a tambour worked cap. And uh, our lovely Christina is going to be teaching a tambour workshop and as part of that you will be reproducing that cap and I've already um, you know done the patterning and everything for the cap it's all ready to go but we just have to figure out where when we're going to be able to schedule the the workshop itself so yes yes I will I'm actually still researching those caps Colette there's still more information to be gotten from them. And I've actually added quite a bit to them as well since I got those. So hi. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got more stuff, you guys, if you're interested. Way more. <laughs> Lots of stuff. One of the things that we're doing, I... Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, I'm so sorry. He's going to go sit on the sofa. Yeah. Yes, Selena, hopefully that cap workshop will be online um, in the coming year sometime. Um, it's it's in our list of things to schedule out. Um, and I know Christina's ready to teach it. You can't put him looking in the corner. <laughs> okay. Nobody hey, puts the child in the corner. Oh, I'm sorry, Grogu. Shh. Oh. 
child. Baby Yoda. We must not Baby reveal Yoda. the name for those who haven't gotten to that episode yet. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, buddy. Okay. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. I'll just give him my... So we've, we've got a lot of great to workshops eat. and um, YouTube tutorials and mm -hmm. sew alongs coming up for the next year we're we'll share some of that information with you all in two weeks we'll be doing mm -hmm. another live um on the 18th yep. and we'll share some information about the new year then um but let's get back to talking about right all now. this stuff yeah i just all piled tons of stuff in front of angela we've she got did some... she said talk about this talk about this talk about this well we've got some like special new stuff that just went up a few minutes ago on the yep. website as we're cleaning house. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you talk right. about those yeah. things? I, yeah. I want to talk about these first because yes. the whole cleaning house thing, literally Brooke walks into my office and she'll say, what are these? What are the, and I'm like, where did you find those even? We have stuff that has been squirreled away for, I can't tell you how long and now available to you at a bargain basement price. <laughs> I have tiny little spools of heavy black cotton thread, really high quality cotton thread, as a matter of fact, um, that is going up on the web. It's going up now, right? It's already gone up. It's gone up. Um, limited quantity. When they're gone, they're gone, and you'll never see them again because it's not manufactured anymore. We have hobnails. Please don't ask me why or how, but boxes of them. What are hobnails? Hobnails are little nails that go into the bottom of leather shoes. They have been around since Roman times. They were used for traction, basically. Um, they would hammer patterns into the bottom of the soles of the shoes and the heels of the shoes and to create traction, like in mud, um, on um, uneven ground, etc. They will also scratch your wooden floors indoors, so do not wear hobnail shoes in the house. Oh, and do not wear them on a slippery surface because they can be very slippery. Um, but in reenactment circles, uh, especially the men know about hobnails, but you see hobnail boots, um, I know up into World War I and probably past that, where they're still putting hobnails into shoes for traction. So Brianna said, Ye old cleats. Ye old cleats. Yes, they are the ye old cleats. And the ye old cleats will be available in sets of 24 for, I don't know what, really cheap. <laughs> $4. Yeah, okay, really cheap. And, and the black cotton thread is 75 cents. There you go. Super cheap. Super duper cheap. The other thing is, as you, many of you who have been customers of ours for many years know that we had a shoe business. Um, we developed shoes back, oh my gosh, over 25 years ago. Um, I actually developed them before we became Burnley and Trowbridge. And we had one shoemaker. And as the years went on, he got older and he unfortunately uh, finally got ill and was unable to build shoes anymore. So at that point in time, we had a choice. We could take our shoes, we could go find somebody that would mass manufacture, et cetera, or we could let, let it be, let our legacy stand as it was. And we decided to let the legacy stand because Jose had done beautiful shoes for us for many years. And I know there are people out there who still have their shoes that they bought for me in the early days. Um, but one of the things we have with those shoes, getting to this the point, was buckles, of course, because it was a convenience item. Well, now we have no shoes, but we still have buckles. So I decided to give them a nice, healthy discount. And you will find them. They're on our front page now, right? So we have buckles available, shoe buckles. We have the pattern buckle in the silver and the brass. We also have our oval buckle. And we have our large rectangular buckle, which is really suited for larger shoes for women or men's shoes, typically more men's shoes. All of them have been discounted and they will be available until they're gone. And Brooke just lost her needle. Scissors. Apparently. Scissors. How could you lose scissors? I have no idea. They're somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, check them out on the front page. Great stocking stuffers, inexpensive if you're fixing to buy silk or whatever or uh, other fabrics or something else anyway add those to it and you got a nice stocking stuffer 
Um, some of the other things that and, and you guys may or may not be aware that we carry. I, um, years ago, bought a couple of the Ladies Monthly Museum originals. And they're 1800, which is really cool because it is the turn of a new century, right? So it's that first year of the new century. And I have a spring one um, that was done in May, I think it was. I have my glasses May. On. Yeah, May. And then the December one. So we have them available. Um, I have a wonderful friend who happens to be a really good printer. And he made fantastic facsimiles for me of the originals, including the original blue paper um, front that they came with. Um, these were not like the earlier ladies, um, uh, ladies magazine, which had like a marble papered front. They had this blue paper front. And so he reproduced that for me as well. But they are so cool because it is a snapshot of winter and spring of 1800. And you will find in the back that, towards the back, that there are also a couple of color plates of the fashion at that time, um, which I can't find now. There are poems, there are talks about the politics of the day. Um, here we go. Um, here's one of the fashions from December. So, uh, circa 1800 and afternoon dress for 1800. There you go. So these are really lovely. Um, they're only $15 a piece. Again, this is something that you can put into your basket and have at an event. Um, they're historically accurate. You know, it's something that, that makes a nice accessory, but also they're wonderful to read and you don't have to worry about destroying an antique by turning the pages. I mean, they'd be a great gift yeah. for someone. Yeah. Um, because we've been on this sewing jag, we've had all these little kits we've been putting together. Um, we had put out a, uh, a number of hand sewing kits um, so that people could give them as gifts or keep them um, for people that are just getting into sewing or people that, that don't have like um, historic um, tools and things like that. So we decided once those were gone that we would add another element to that. So we now have a kit. It's not up yet, right? It is up. Oh, it is up. It's it up right now. Up. Someone's already bought one. Oh, okay. They just went up, but they come in a little box like this with a little sticker on it. It's another one of our bags. And by the way, I designed this bag based on a lead seal for wool fabric. Um, so that's, that's why that looks like that. So, um, and what you'll get in this particular kit is a card that tells you about the different tools that are in the bag and how they're used and how they were used and how they can be used. You'll also get... Can you move the box out of the way so we can see the... Yeah, but I don't want them to see the plastic. Oh, okay. You'll also get a pair of our carved embroidery scissors. One of our brand new... And this has just... This has gone up, right? No, that will go up on Tuesday. Okay, this will go up on Tuesday. So you're getting a preview. Um, I just got these. I've been working with my uh, manufacturer. This is a reproduction of a awl that is in the collection of Historic Jamestown. It's dated 1610. It's a bone awl. I'm assuming it was dug and that is our take on it. It's really beautiful. It came out great. I'm, I'm super proud of it. Um, and that's going to be part of this. So you'll have an awl. You have a bonus little beeswax, holiday beeswax, yeah, snowflake. snowflake. We're yeah. hoping here for some snow days. Yeah. Well, at least I am. We'll see. A small creaser, okay, and turner, because you've got that, that sharp end. And then a bakken, you know, for um, either lacing or you can use it for putting ribbon or cord into casings, etc. So that's this little kit. Um, and we hope that, you know, 
folks enjoy it. The other thing that you can do with this kit too, if you want to, is you can add to it. You know, you can add some winders, you can add needles, you can add thread, you can add other elements to it. Um, we've discounted it so that it's, um, it prices out at $25. And if you want to add, you know, another $10, $15 to it, then you've got um, a really substantial sewing kit for someone. So that's another little goodie that, and this is limited quantity also. Um, any questions before I keep showing you stuff? <laughs> um, what else haven't you shown them? Yeah, that so is, much. Um, how about the the death head book? Oh, because we just got those back into stock, and we've got a great supply of those. Yeah, we actually did a kit for this last year, um, but you can put your own kit together. We have our death head button book, which is was published by us, written by Norm Foose, um, and we use our thousand denier our buttonhole twist and the larger wooden button molds when somebody's first learning how to do death head buttons so my suggestion and those put, button and the wooden buttons button molds are made by by norm <laughs> yeah they are um so you put together the book the button molds and the twist and you've got a nice little gift that is a learning gift for someone that's interested in learning how to do uh, silk uh, thread buttons. And we have information on the page with the book and the button molds about how much you need to get for a certain number of buttons. Right. So if so. you go to the, is it on the death head page yes. or is it on the button mold page? It's, I think it's on both. Okay. It should so, be on both. Yeah, there should, it'll there's give you There's at least a yardages. link from one to the other. Yeah. So that can, you can put that together as a nice little thing. Another thing we have now, I just, unfortunately, I'm out of the ladies guide one, but it's on its way. It's winging its way to me. It'll be here probably Monday. Um, these books are reproductions with um, update from Kathleen Canick. Uh, I've got the ladies guide one, ladies guide two, and the tailor's guide. They're all sewing books and they're excellent, excellent sewing books. Um, she produced these many years ago. Um, they are bound in a way that you can take them to a show. If you are, if you are at an event where you have to be historically accurate, you can have this in your basket and nobody's going to question it. Um, they have a lot of really good information. So if you're better with looking at a book to learn, this is what you want. And it makes a great gift too. In fact, I've had several emails in the last day or two with people saying, I wanted to get the ladies guide one for my daughter or my friend or whatever, and you're out of them. They're on their way. So we have those as well. And I think they retail at 14, something like that. Yeah. 14 a piece. Yeah. And so the only other thing, um, well, there are other new things, but the only other new product type of thing that I had promised that was coming in and did come in was my additional aglet that I had made. This aglet is very plain. It's shorter than the other aglets that you see that were that we suggest for 17th and earlier period uh, points. This one has an open end. You want one of these? Yeah, I want one of the empty ones take that one. Oh, um, we, if you go to the website, when are these up yet? Brooke? Uh, they will be up on Tuesday. Okay. When these go up on Tuesday, if you go to it, there's a link that shows, uh, the photograph that I took of the original linen, um, stay cord that I studied in the foundling collection. And it still had its aglet attached to it. Now, the aglet was a little more conical than, or, or a little more straight up and down than this one is. But aesthetically, it's the same concept where the actual cord goes all the way through and you see a little end here. And then it can be stitched in place as well. Um, this is done with our linen stay cord, which at the moment we are out of. But we have a, a great quantity winging its way to us as we speak. So hopefully if the import gods are good, we'll get it in a timely fashion. Hmm. 
<laughs> but that, that's our new 18th century aglet. So we have that available. Um, we've also got three new ribbon colors. Ah, so, the, and they're really pretty, you guys. We now have three new ribbons. We have apple green, coral red, and merlot. Um, and I'm thrilled with them. We're also going to have some new two inch going up. Um, they've not been photographed yet, but we're going to have some new colors that are from our collection, but that have not recently, that had not previously been available in uh, the two inch that we are going to now offer in two inch. I don't think there's any other like special like one-off things that we're going to be putting up between now and Christmases. Oh yeah, there is. We are going to be putting up wool um, pocket, whoa, wool pocket um, packs. So piece of pocket packs, but also, and again, this goes back to Lemonade Bay Daily. Um, if you go to her Instagram, you can see what she's been doing. Um, we originally were like, okay, we've got these worsteds. We'll put them up as uh, piece of pocket kits as well. But she mentioned that she made a tailor's pillow. Um, and it was actually done with all of our wools. Um, what she does is she uses cabbage. She stuffs a muslin bag. She has, I think it's an 18 by 21 uh, muslin bag that she puts all her cabbage in. Ca and Cabbage being what in the 18th century? Oh, okay, sorry. Cabbage being all the offcuts, the little pieces of fabric that are really kind of useless for anything. Um, but they're not useless because you can still recycle them. You can still do things with them. All the little pieces that you don't think you're going to use for something would go into this cotton bag that she had on the side of her sewing table. And when it was stuffed full, then she would make a wool cover for it. Now, in the 18th century, they would have things like this. Basically, they were called tailor's pillows. And they could sit on your lap for sewing. They could be used to iron on because wool is non-combustible. So you, if you want something that's not going to melt or ignite, uh, lay a piece of wool down if you need to do some ironing, and you'll be fine. Um, so she makes these pillows um, and she says that her family uses them for all kinds of things not just as a tailor's pillow um, so that's another suggestion for all your little off cuts of fabric you don't have to throw them away you don't have to worry about them not being turned into something they can become stuffing for a pillow um, so we will have the worsted kits so it'll again be the three by three cuts um, and I guess we'll have 20 20 pieces per the bag again um, so it's enough to make a pocket front but you could also buy a couple you know and do a large pillow if you wanted so, um, so that was that's the only other new little fun thing that we're doing and all of these are limited when they're gone they're gone this means that all the things that used to roll out at like Fort Frederick for those of you that used to come and be banging on my uh, tent uh, on Thursday morning at the crack of dawn to get all the deals. The deals went up online this year. So they're all going to be gone after the first of the year. Mm. I hope. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. So uh, Connie would like to know where we are spending our holidays. Home. Home <laughs> by ourselves. No, actually, no, that's not true. This year... I will be celebrating my Christmas Eve with my germ pod. And my germ pod being all the people I work with. So we're going to have our Christmas Eve together this year. Um, Jim and I have always celebrated our Christmas on Christmas Eve. I grew up celebrating um, German tradition. So Christmas Eve is our big day. Um, so we will be celebrating with our employees this year or daughters as some people think that we are yeah exactly as as the postman does oh jim i hope you're watching he's not watching but <laughs> i am napping. gonna yeah i am gonna go home and tell him <laughs> <laughs> um and annika wants to know about if there's a chance to get the pattern for the english gown since she missed the workshop 
We do not offer that commercially. That is uh, an integral part of the workshop. However, that workshop is not over with forever. It will be offered again. So if you're not on our mailing list, it's a really good idea to get on it. And that way you will know when it's going to go up. And I should also say that the shapes that um, we offer in the workshop are, is not a pattern for the gown. It is simply the shapes and half size for the lining that then we cut Turn out from gown. that. Yeah. Um, so it, it's not something that on your own would would do much right um, you really need the workshop it's really just a part it's an integral part of the workshop so but we'll talk in two weeks about what we have planned for for next year with for the next workshop. year so yeah we've got some fun ideas and yep. some, some we things do. we really like again again we don't know what the new year is going to bring we're anticipating what we think it's going to bring and we're trying to plan accordingly you know, hands-on workshops will come into being again at some point in time. We're just not real sure when that's going to happen. But meanwhile, we're going to keep you engaged through my phone. So. <laughs> well, shall we move to the educational portion of the, the, the live where we learn from Angela about fabric. <laughs> and you also learn what we have just put up online yeah. and we'll also show you the things that are coming on tuesday that there's some very exciting things these tuesday. are up that's coming right? yes exactly yeah brooke is very organized i am not to so go and push everything else over to the side yeah oh lord so don't worry oh there goes the thread all the things okay all right so these things are all online right now and that I so I kind of went a little nuts but I'm not sorry I got into this jag of finding these beautiful worsteds that I couldn't necessarily document to the 18th century but were certainly great for later period and time traveling and so we showed, we showed a lot of them the other week. Yeah, but and we just, I can't I can't say no to them, yeah. especially when they're fabulous wools. I mean, you know, nice wools. So I didn't, and so I have more. <laughs> so, so the first up is this really pretty burgundy houndstooth. It's a really tiny houndstooth. Um, it's all wool. It's a worsted. It has it's it's fairly um, thin. Um, you can't really see through it, but it's thin. It's 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 um, dress weight. Um, it has a nice hand. It has a good drape to it. Um, with the right interfacings and linings, it could be made into something structured, but it could also drape really well for a dress or a skirt. Or, I'm thinking Victorian yeah. bicycle outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely could be something like that. Um, it's a very pretty color. I mean, I I love it. Um, I got it in in this real pretty um, burgundy and kind of off whitey creamy color. And then I also got it in a steel blue. So it's a gray blue, uh, and and then again the white. Um, color so I have that that's you're going to find that in our worsted or our woolen specialties specials and then we were able to get this again now we had this once before way back when this is a printed crepe and I'm absolutely in love with it um, you see in the 30s 1930s um, yeah the 1930s yeah I should be clarify right the 1930s crepes become extremely popular um, although this can predate I mean you can go back with wool crepe uh, back into mid 19th century really um, but this pattern just speaks 1930s to me um, it's it is so pretty I mean it would make a tea gown it would make a blouse it would make um, oh my gosh a lounging suit Ooh. Seeing as Wearing History just came out with a new pattern for a lounging suit, it would be perfect for that. So that 
you guys definitely need to check out. It's a beautiful navy color. It's got a red and kind of a, a, a yellowy color in it and then a deep red uh, or a deep uh, a blue, a medium blue, a deep red, and a yellow. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh. What? Stop looking at me, Linda. No, oh, look at you. Her t-shirt matches her hair today. It does. It does. You know it's pretty. Yeah, it is. So I've also got this Glen check that I just got in. This is another one too that's got that is super. It's so soft, it's so lovely, and it has a hole in that. Yeah, that's why <laughs> the, that was in the scrap store. Yeah, door. that's why it's a sample. Um, it has, it has got this really good drape to it. Again, this would make a beautiful dress. It would make a beautiful suit, um, skirt. Um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I. It's lightweight. It's a worsted. Um, depending on how much um, structure you put in it, you know, you could do something very tailored or do something very fluid with it. And it's it's a brown with a black, a uh, gold, and then it's got. A, was that a? That's a blue green, I think. It's blue green, yeah. Yeah, the lights are different wherever we go, and they look different up here than they do downstairs. But this one, I'm in love with it. I really, I actually like all of them. I want some of all. Of them. <laughs> and then we put the sacks in. No. No, this one is the. That's the dark. I can't tell in this sea light. Sea green? No, this should be the sea. Dark sea green. That is the okay. dark sea green. All right, dark sea green. I think. It's a. We're confused. Yeah, that's the dark sea green. You know, guys. I've always named things based on 18th century names. It's getting harder and harder. One, because we're doing time traveling. And two, because the number of fabrics that we're getting in is greater than it ever used to be. So I struggle sometimes. And we have two that are very close in color, but they are different. And this one is the sea green. So it's more aqua-y than the other one that I'm going to show you. Um, it's beautiful. It's a medium weight linen, so it's got some body to it. Mm -hmm. So you can do, you know, a, a, um, a skirt out of this, a petticoat out of this. Um, you could do a nice work gown out of this. Um, you could do a lightweight jacket out of this. Yeah, this is going up next week. This is our Saxon green. Um, and you can see the difference. If I put them next to each other, one is more blue, more... No, it's not. Yeah, the dark green is not upstairs with us. Okay. Yeah, that's been <laughs> for a while. Christina is hollering about dark greens, but yes. this is not dark green. No. This is Saxon. And green. that's the same Saxon that we had a while back. Yes, it was a different is, number. Right. It is the exact same one that we had probably two, three months back. We didn't realize it until after we'd assigned it a number, or taken a picture of it, and done the thing. And then we said, wait a minute, haven't we had this before? <laughs> and so it is. But you can see the difference here. You can see the difference between the two when you look here. Um, one is a lot more aqua-y than the other. But both of them are beautiful. This one is lighter weight. Um, it's got a finer yarn to it, too. Again, petticoats, jackets, gowns, um, bed gowns, linings, children's clothing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Both of these would do well for that. Um, and that this one's coming up next week. Yes. But this one is up now. Yes. This is yeah. <laughs> so confusing. i got to stop buying fabric. <laughs> I think we all feel that way. We all need to stop buying fabric. And then we, we buy some more. Fabric. And then we buy some more. This herringbone is again sort i've never seen anything like it in the 18th century although the herringbone weave pattern existed absolutely um but this is so pretty because it's got these like little bits of blue and red in it so it's got a really pretty um coloring to it but at a distance you know it kind of blends into sort of a maroon tone what time period would that be good for? Um, 
I'm comfortable going, you know, like mid 19th on, maybe even a little bit earlier. Um, I just can't, I've not seen the combination of the multi threads and the herringbone in a wool in the 18th century yeah to be really specific but would it be so. good for like a 19 uh, not 19 1830s or 40s men's um vest perhaps possibly coat? possibly yeah again i haven't seen so but i've definitely seen you know civil war era on you see patterns like this and you see them combining a lot of different colors um it's not unusual so with that i'm comfortable so and then we've got this really dark brown, which is, this is the chocolate. beautiful. Yeah, this this is a, um, don't have my glasses. I went to get them off my head and they're not there. No, the um, snarky yeah, flower, the um, the herringbone mm -hmm. uh, and the, the brown plaid are up right now. So is this chocolate brown. And um, this, like, look at this again. I mean, if you look at it in different lighting going up and down, it's just so pretty. It's gorgeous. And it looks beautiful with, the chocolate brown so the chocolate brown is a plain weave it's an absolutely excellent worsted stuff it is um, appropriate for any type of clothing that where you need a lightweight wool so gowns jackets petticoats um, men's waistcoats uh, if you want to make a man's suit out of this, you need to fully line it and you need to do some structure in the coat itself. Um, but the, the, the weave of it, the coloring of it is dead on 18th century. And of course, it time travels. Yeah. So all the way up to today. We were then fortunate enough, this is the last of what's up online right now. We were fortunate enough to get um, linen canvas back in. Um, so we have... A heavy canvas um, in natural and in a bleached this is stout stuff I mean you can see by me holding it and folding it this is stout stout stuff um, this can be suitable for if you need it for uh, buckrams and it stays um, for buckram itself period this can be used as is you don't have to add any extra sizing so um, for button stands that kind of thing in coats um, it's definitely very serviceable for doing um, uh, tickings uh, for doing a pair of heavy trousers really heavy work clothes um, like jackets, men's jackets, runaway clothing. Um, you know, if you're looking to do um, uh, slave clothing, this is a very appropriate fabric for that. Um, the bleached as well, because it's, you do see, it's not fully bleached, it's a real creamy color. Um, you do see bleached linens quite a bit. It's not as uncommon as you think. and part of that is because it naturally bleaches. So the more it's worn, the more it's exposed to light, the more it's washed, the lighter it's gonna become. Um, so depending on the flax that's being used and the coloring of the flax in the beginning, you can get a creamy color uh, relatively quickly, um, just through wear and exposure to sunlight and, and washing. This one has a tremendous amount of sizing in it. So if you're looking for the stiffest one, I would go for this one if you're using it as a buckram. Um, and these are both available up online. They are limited quantity. And when they're gone, I don't know that I can get them again because I really, I had a really dry spell and then they dug some out of the very dark, dark, deep depth recesses, what have you, of the warehouse to find these bits for me. So, so that's what we have online right now. So if you're perusing while you're watching or listening, you'll see all those things. I think Brooke does an amazing job of keeping the front page looking very pretty and, and very tantalizing. I know she does some great um, coordination for you guys just to spur you on. And I see those color combinations going out the door all the time. I have a little too much fun, just like Christina yeah. does with all of her little like kits and packs. Yeah. I have a little too much fun matching fabrics up and on the front rearranging page. them.
Yeah. So but that's, that's what makes it great. Right? We've got some time to show the, the stuff that's coming out next week. Okay. If you, Where are we with time? We've got about 10 more minutes. Okay. So I'll quickly go through these. Start Did anybody with, have questions or comments at this point? So go ahead and start with the linens before you pull out the next bit. Leave, okay. leave these over here. Okay. These are my, this is the surprise at the end. The surprise at the end. It's the, the grand hurrah. Um, okay, so I showed you this. This is our Saxon Green, which is back in stock. And what's fun about this is that it, it has some great coordinating aspects. We got this great little stripe in. It does run this way. It doesn't doesn't run salvage to salvage. But we got this great little stripe in. Coordinates really well with this. It also coordinates really well with our um, our other one, which is more of an aqua color. So it's it's lovely. So if you're looking for cuffs for that bag gown that you just made out of this, this is what you want. It'll look great. So we've got that, and then. And I think actually, we currently got that stripe because of Christina. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's. Christina there's, has a thing for this color, as does uh, some Brittany. other. Yeah. 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 I don't care about that color. I just want all the reds. I, I like this color. This, <laughs> this is one of my colors. I like it. Um, <laughs> we also. Now, this was a Christina. This was definitely a Christina. This is time traveling. You see weave checks like this in the 18th century you see weave patterns like this however i can't say that i've seen one that is colored in the manner that this one is colored so with that said when i look at it it has a more contemporary appearance to me so i don't suggest it for the 18th century however I do suggest it for later periods. And it's a beautiful, it's lightweight, but it's got some body to it. Um, it would, again, do well for a um, for skirts, for gowns and dresses, um, for lightweight jackets. Um, yeah, apron. You know, look, a later look, period apron. Snarky flowers, so that would look great with uh, Saxon green. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. It'll look... And it'll look good with the uh, dark gold that we have next. Like, yeah, and the, all the those... next one coming up is a dark gold. And that one, actually, there's a tiny bit of that color in this. So you can see all these coordinating together. And the dark gold is also a lightweight. We've had this in the past. Um, you see... A lot of brownish colored linens in the 18th century and they could get a whole variety of tones of browns goaty browns what have you um, through natural dyeing and this color would not be that difficult to get um, it would probably be more fugitive than ours is going to be because it's modern dyed but it you could have some conceivably have a linen of something like this color um, so these are the new colored linens and checked and striped linens. And then we got one final linen, which I was really excited about. Um, this is a, it's a crossbar pattern and it is a woven, uh, check. It is fairly, uh, lightweight. It's somewhat, um, um, translucent. You can see through it. Um, transparent? Trans, yeah, transparent, that word. Let's, Let's all see. watch Angela just through the fabric. Can you see me through the fabric? Yeah, we can see you through the fabric. How funny is that? Am I making face it? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> but this one, I was excited when I saw it, and I'll be darned if I can find it. And if one of you guys finds it, please send it to me. I, w I wanted to swear it was in the Met. Now, I there is a late 18th century quarterback, pretty much think it's a quarterback gown, um, you know, perhaps an Italian gown, made out of a cotton version, I think, of this that has little embroidered sprigs on it. And I know it exists, 
I know it's there and I can't find it. I now think, I think you're blending two gowns together. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. No, I'm not. Okay. I know it's there. I got the fabric to prove it because I, I stashed the fabric away years ago when I found a fabric like it and I had seen this gown. But I can't remember what collection it's in and for whatever reason I have it nowhere in a database that I can find. But that means nothing because I'm horrible with organizing my information. But anyway, so I got excited. So it's great for 18th century. It's great for 19th century and so on and so forth. Um, I mean, the world is your oyster with this linen. It's just really beautiful. It's an Irish, uh, the, the weave pattern that makes up the stripes that make up the check is a little, it looks like a little, uh, like back stitch pattern. So it's like a satin stitch, um, that goes across it. So it has some, some, uh, texture to it. It can be made into accessories. It's just so multi-purpose. It's, it's kind of one of those things where you just need to buy a couple of yards and put it in your stash because you need it. <laughs> you know Brittany well. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. So we, like I said, we got some linens and we've gotten tons of wools in. Um, and we pretty much got all those up for you. Although I'm always looking for more wool. We do have some heavy wools coming in, hopefully in the next week or two. We'll see. Um, but we did get a, one last thing um, we have three cotton manchester velvets up online now we've got a beautiful sage green we've got a cream and we've got a very beautiful ice blue well no no no, no. With what fawn oh and ice we've got fawn gone. ice blue ice blue's gone are you kidding me yeah. i wanted some of that oh it's too late take nabbit i'm taking some of this one <laughs> Dag nabbit. I want to say, because whoever's got that ice blue, think please. Th think short cape with white fur. Oh, it can't be more beautiful than that. Anyway, three more Manchesters, you guys. Oh. If, if Brittany, Christina, and I leave any for anyone. Yeah, these are these They're, are amazing. They are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. What did we end up calling this one? Merlot. Thank you. I drink a lot of wine, so. <laughs> yeah. Brooke always wants to call everything wine by a wine cup. But anyway, we've got this beautiful Merlot, and I actually have a post I'm going to do because I found this wonderful Edwardian suit made out of exactly the same color. Mm. Um, and I think it was trimmed in black. I don't remember. But this, this, these three are softer in their drape than the four that we had previously. Um, and still have, but they are basically the same quality, just a, a softer um, velvet. We've got this Merlot, which is gorgeous. It's really hard to depict it in a picture. It's much better to see it 3D. Then we have this super deep purple, which is beautiful. I mean, I'm so in love with it. And then we have a gorgeous, rich forest green. So these will be going up on Tuesday. Again, it's limited, you guys. So if you see something you like, you hop on that Tuesday train and buy your stuff because I can't get it again. I bought all there was. One of the things that people ask me a lot, and I know we're getting close to time, is they'll say, when are you going to get blah, blah, blah back in? The problem is I don't get blah, blah, blah back in because I buy all there is. Um, if I were to have a product that you could buy over and over again, you would pay substantially more for it. So I'm buying product where that's all there is. I'm getting a better price and therefore I'm able to offer you a better price. So if you see something you like, jump on it. I had somebody today write me a personal Instagram where she sent me a picture. Somebody had bought two linens, a purple and a and an aqua color. And she goes, oh, that's where my purple linen went. I had it in my basket, but I hadn't bought it yet. Somebody else bought it out from under her. So, yeah, it happens, guys. But anyway, so look, I leave you with all kinds of prettiness. So, like, all the pretty, all the pretty. Look at this, you guys. It's just... Uh.
I'm so in love. I gotta clean out my sewing room again and become a hoarder. I'm gonna have to unhoard again. We're gonna have to have an Angela's attic sale. <laughs> what kind of stuff is the velvet for in the 18th century? Like So you do see velvet, you see velvet in men's clothing a lot, Manchester's. Um, you don't see it as much in women's clothing. There are some depictions of um, art where a woman is wearing velvet. It may be artist drapery. I don't know that it's a garment per se, but there are a few you know, garments that are depicted as velvet. But you see velvet as trim for women. Um, you see it on riding habits. You see it being used on uh, cloaks. Um, Oftentimes, the velvet is silk uh, for ladies, but these cotton Manchesters are something that become very popular in the last quarter of the 18th century, and again, a lot with menswear. But in the 19th century, you see everybody wearing velvet. And of course, earlier centuries, you see a lot of velvet. So, are we running out of time? It's, it is that time. The, the hour goes fast. When I'm, when I'm busy trying to sell you stuff. Yeah, when you're busy educating us about textiles. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I learn something every every time we do this. So, yeah. And we'll be back again in two weeks on yep. the 18th at the same time with maybe not more new stuff, but more fun things to talk about. Oh, yeah, because and... we've got a lot of plans for our new yeah. year. Yeah. And if you've got any specific questions of things that we could talk about, please email um, our email us directly at info at burnley and and uh let us know yeah what your questions are right yeah and you know guys keep sewing uh please stay safe this holiday season i know it is a different season and you know we're all struggling with the idea that we may not see family and may not do the things that we always look forward to that one time of the year um, but wow, I want to see everybody next Christmas. So with that said, stay safe, stay well, and keep sewing. And we will see you in two weeks. Take care.